Welcome back to Tamriel's Got Talent. Let's hear it for the vanishing act, the bear tamer, fire breather, demon monkey summoner, the walking laser show, and that creepy guy who likes touching corpses. Ew, who invited him? Ew, ew. This one does not know. Four years ago, he just showed up. Today we have a newcomer! What's your talent? Books. Yeah? I open them. Bright lights, lots of noise. I'm sorry, but we already have a laser show. Not like this. Okay, but remember this is a talent contest. You can't win with just one trick. You sure? Hi, this is Khan from Ninja Pulse, and this is the Arcanist, with by far the easiest rotation I've ever put together. It's not the absolute strongest, but it's fun, the damage is good, and anyone can do it. I'll show you how to set it up for Magicka or Stamina, how to get the most out of it, and explain why I chose certain gear and abilities over others. If you're curious about the highest performing setup, this is probably it right here. I've seen 128k passes with this, and it's what most of us have been mucking about with on PTS or something similar, but I didn't exactly fall in love with it. The Riptide minigame is easy enough, but it also relies on heroism potions, you have to track off balance, although I didn't on this one, juggle conflicting dots and deal with a lot of clunky bar swaps. It's pretty chaotic, and that's all fine, the highest performing rotation should be the hardest, but I know that a lot of players simply aren't interested in doing all this stuff in actual content. PTS lag didn't help, but it didn't seem like a rotation I'd use much outside a super optimized setting. If you want to push yourself on the dummy and spend hours crit farming, this will probably be great for your muscle memory. But if you just want to get behind the wheel of the Arcanist and deal some big damage in content without too much hassle, I've got a setup and rotation that's much easier to replicate anywhere. Start with the gear, Deadly Strike and Whirl of the Depths. If you're Stam, you can still use Riptide and Pillar of Nern for a bit more work and slightly more damage. We've got Black Rose Daggers on the back bar, a One Piece Slime Craw, and the Velothi Ur Mage's Amulet. This is the new mythic, clearly designed with the Arcanist in mind, but don't worry, you don't have to have it right away, just wear Zahn until you dig it up. You'll miss about 4k damage. The simplest way to play Arcanist is to build around Exhausting Fate Carver, also known as The Beam. Deadly Strike, Black Rose Daggers and the Velothi Amulet all buff the beam, and we're slotting Biting Aura and Thaumaturge for the same reason, which is nice since Whirl is also an AoE dot. Pillar of Nern is stronger for single targets or tight stacks, but we want Whirl for minus Slayer. If you switch to Riptide, the Nern is back on the table. Daggers are the best front bar weapons, but we've got no weapon abilities on the front bar, so you can use whatever you want. The rotation follows the same principle, spend as much time beaming as possible. That's another reason I love Quick Cloak with the Black Rose Daggers here, it lasts so long and lines up perfectly with Inspired Scholarship, which is a must. Just be aware that Zoss changed the set to activate only in combat, that's annoying, but not a deal breaker. Scalding Rune and Trap are there to keep up burning and hemorrhaging, because the Psychic Lesion passive boosts our damage from status effects. You might think we don't need trap because we have minor force from the Velothi amulet, but between the initial hit, the dot, and the near permanent hemorrhage uptime, trap deals almost 8k DPS, which is a huge amount for a 20 second ability. If you want to drop something, make it scalding rune. Since we already get burning from our weapon glyph, you'll just lose some uptime and a few k DPS. Finally, there's fulminating rune, which seems too good not to use and drops a big damage synergy which up to 3 allies can take, so that's 3 30 second dots, 2 20 second dots. Keep those up on cooldown, then it's just 2 flails, fake carver, 2 flails, fake carver. That's it. I got 119k DPS with Deadly and 121k with Riptide. This was on PTS and I usually gain a little damage when I switch to the live server, 
I know even if it jumps to 123, that's still not amazing compared to other classes, but like I said, it's very easy to replicate, and for most players, that actually matters more. Also, it's a bit like the Necro. Lags behind a bit on single target, but really starts to shine against multiple targets. The Arcanist also has crazy burst, peaking well over 200k DPS without any burst gear. For me, so far, that is the number one reason to play this damage class. One drawback with this setup is the weird weapon enchantments. Beaming for 6 seconds at a time, we don't do a lot of light attacks on the front bar. And without those or weapon abilities to trigger them, the poison and flame glyphs we usually put on our front bar weapons are kinda wasted. After testing various combinations including poisons, the best results I got were putting flame and poison on the back bar, where quick cloak will keep procking them. That means more damage ticks from the enchantments, and more uptime on their status effects. Then I slapped a weapon damage glyph and a shock glyph on the front bar, and just accepted that uptimes wouldn't be great. This was not especially scientific, I just hit the dummy and compared the numbers, so there may be better options, but for this setup, this combo came out 1-2k to 2K ahead of everything else I tested, for both deadly and riptide setups. With Coral Riptide, you need to drain your stamina before you start. After that, it's the same. Pre-buff with Scholarship, Scalding Rune, Trap and Languid Eye, then Cloak, Fulminating Rune, Flail and Fate Carver. Then two Flails and a Fate Carver. Rinse, repeat. Keep doing that until your 30 second dots run out, then recast them all. Recast Trap and Fulminating Rune dynamically in the meantime. They both last 20 seconds, so just track them together. If you're struggling to anticipate when Fate Carver will end, count 6 seconds in your head, or just watch for the camera move. It zooms in at the start, and back out as it's about to finish. A helpful cue, and a great little bit of UX design. You can bar swap off the beam, but it's clunky and you'll lose damage if you do it too soon. I found it better to swap off Barb Trap or Cephaliarch's Flail, but because Flail has a 0.3 second cast time, you can't swap right away. The trick is to wait until you can see the tentacle arms shoot out and then swap. You'll get the hang of it. The Magicka and Stamina setups are almost identical, except for the food. Stamina uses max up food because sustain is very easy, but Magicka uses crunchy spider skewers for the stamina recovery, otherwise it's tough to sustain the flail. I also put inner lights on both bars. Both mini guides are linked in the description below. Stamina is stronger because of max sat food and riptide, but I can showcase some other Magicka setups if you guys are interested. I like the Arcanist. Some of its weirdness is intentional, some maybe not, but I'd rather see the devs swing for the fences than play it safe and make another class like all the others. Also, it feels like it belongs in the game, which is a huge achievement when it looks and sounds so exotic, with crazy greens and purples, and a soundscape full of warped thrumming noises like spaceships, plasma weapons, and cracks in spacetime. The Arcanist sound design is fucking great. And there's some slick animation and FX work to give it a sense of heft and really help sell it to our eyes and ears. Zoss went pretty ambitious with this one, and it seems like they took their time to really nail it. It's also cool that it's so easy to pick up and play. I may not agree with all of the complaints about accessibility in ESO, but I do want more people getting into the game. That's the whole reason this channel exists. So it's great that Zoss have used the Arcanist to lower the ramp a bit. Whether it will engage the most hardcore players, as Brian Wheeler said it should, remains to be seen. Right now, it's not a class that seems to reward creativity or optimization, but that can change and it's not a major complaint. Nothing much changes in Execute, don't recast either of the runes in the last 10 seconds, and only use the beam if you have a couple of seconds left, otherwise just spam flail. That's it. 120k, with a super easy static rotation, without heroism pots, off balance, or anything fancy. This setup is a great choice for getting your Arcanist off the ground, and if you want to add more power later, do it. There is loads more to show with this class, so let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see next. Feel free to share the mini guide and the video anywhere you think it might be helpful. Thanks guys! 
Happy beaming. <laughs>